Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and I hope you're doing well. If this is your first time here and the topics I cover interest you, please consider subscribing. And after watching this lengthy video, if you find it helpful, interesting and entertaining, please give it a like and share it. It really helps my channel grow. So what are we doing today? Well, in this video, I'm going to try to analyze and reverse engineer Waves MV2. I'm hoping. It would have been maybe about 10 or 11 years ago when I purchased MV2 from Waves. And it was the first plugin that I purchased from Waves. Because after researching it, I discovered that it really helps the strenuous job of clip gain editing or automation of a vocal. Um, with the clip gain, so you can automate so that the lower part of, uh, of the audio is increased in volume to have a much more level signal going into your compressor. So the compressor is not overworking it, and it really brings out the vocal being up front. So the MV2 does that so somewhat really great and automatically, so you don't really have to work too hard at it. It has the low level and high level compression. The low level is upward compression, so that means lower signal are amplified, and the high level is a standard compressor that brings high levels down. But what I wanted to find out is the low level or upward compression, how that works. I'm going to try to analyze and in quotes try to reverse engineer it, if you want to call that. Because high level compression is just standard compression. There aren't that many upward compressors that actually work as good as the MV2, but I'm going to try to analyze it so I can replicate that using other plugins. That part will be the following part. This is part one of this video. That's why it's going to be a little bit lengthy, because I want to share every bit of how I'm actually testing, so that if other people out there find out or the shortcomings of my testings, or they have a better way of testing and finding things out, they can let me know in the comment section. So please do use the comment section below to let me know what I've done wrong while analyzing and in quotes reverse engineering the MV2. Because currently MV2 is, and maybe a couple other plugins, uh, but especially MV2 are the only thing that I'm holding on with waves and not letting them go. Once I sort out how MV2 works and I can replicate it, Bye bye waves. And their constant email of, you know, update plans, update plans. They always have 25% off update plans year round every week. Hopefully, I will resolve that for me and for you. There are several ways I want to test this. Um, one is using my vocal, because this is a take that I've got, and it's got a few low level signals and a bit of high level signals. And I'm going to see how it affects visually. And then I'm going to use a tone generator using white noise so that uh, I can use the level and bring it up and see where the threshold points are and somewhat try to find out the, um, the ratio, if there is any, or is, is it just simply adding decibels? But there's, there's got to be some threshold somewhere that it stops um, increasing the level once it reaches a certain threshold. So that's what we're going to find out, and hopefully we can repli replicate that. Okay, let's have a quick listen to what the actual audio sounds like without the MV2, and we engaged in, and then we can hear the difference. And we're going to look at the levels as well, because those are important. And I'm going to try to write down these things, so if you see me go quiet, that's only because I'm writing things down and making and taking notes, but if I take too long, I'll cut them in post editing. Here we go, let's have a listen. All the people around me keep telling me to stay above. She's the devil in disguise, tearing my whole life apart. All the people around. Okay, so it started about minus 10 dB. And it goes up to minus 6.3. So there's about, you know, um, 3 dB difference from the peak around here to around there. 
But it's about minus 10 around here, wasn't it, or something? Let me just have a quick run that again. All the people around me. Okay, so it's about minus 12 is what we're looking at. And then what we normally do is we increase these until we get, you know, much more level of audio as it's playing. So I normally increase about 12, so I'm virtually doubling um, four times the, the gain. And I'm just going to monitor what's actually happening here. All the people around me keep telling me to stay above. She's the devil in disguise, tearing my whole life apart. Okay, so it started at minus 10, so it gave 2 dB gain, and now it's the peak is minus 4.8 or minus 5 dB. So that pretty much added from 6.3 to 4.8, about a dB extra gain or thereabouts. I'm just going to round the numbers at the moment. Of course, it also depends on the incoming signal level. From minus uh, 12, when the signal is around here, to minus 5, about here. And let's watch how much level is reduced down here. All the people around me Keep telling me to stay above. She's the devil in disguise. Tearing my whole life apart. So about 9 dB All there. The people are yeah, so about adding about 9 dB according to this level here. Because it's from 12, it's going down to 3. I just want to find out the threshold where that changes from upward compression to stopping it. I'm just going to mute the main so we don't have to listen to the white noise. Let's just turn it on. And I've got that to um, plus 12 dB for the low level. And let's increase the level and watch the signal level here. So minus 120, and it's going up, 120 dB. Okay, so at minus 100 dB, we already have 88 minus 88 dB. So that thing already increased sort of like 12 dB. So that's 12 dB of gain. If we go into, let's say, 90, and we got minus 78, yep, 12 dB. We go to about 80, and that's 68. So it's adding 12 dB of gain as we are increasing, just to make sure that, yep, there is that noise there. Um, let's keep going. At 70, it's 58 or thereabouts, yep. So that is a 12 dB of adding. And now it's just starting to flicker there. We go into... 60 dB, and we got minus 48, so that's still adding 12 dB to the signal. That's increased to 50, yep, 38, so it's still adding 12 dB. At about minus 40, now we have 10 dB difference, minus 39.84 to minus 29.6. So, and this is sort of reducing now from minus 12. So somewhere around here is starting to reduce. So there must be some sort of a ratio there. At 51 is 40. 49, that's 11, yeah, it looks like about 48 dB or thereabouts that it's actually changing, now it's only 
11 dB difference instead of 12. At 46, it's 35. 44, yeah, but minus, I will say, 34. So that's 10 dB. So a threshold where the ratio is changing now is at minus 44 dB or minus 45 dB. Hmm. Okay. Let's keep going. And if we go into minus 30 dB, thereabouts, I'm just running numbers, and we have minus 21. So now we're only getting about 22, about 8 dB of gain. So about minus 20, we're getting minus 15. So now it's only adding 5 dB of gain, and we can tell that from the level over here as well. So as the volume is getting higher, it's adding less and less. So there's definitely some ratio there. And we can probably plot that and find out. At minus about 12, let's just go to minus 12 dB, we're getting 7.5. So definitely we can plot that. I will plot that and then make a chart so we can find out what the upward compression ratio is, because that is important when we are using uh, another upward uh, compression plugin, so we can put the same amount. And if we are going to, let's say, minus 9 dB, now it's 7.1, minus 6 dB, Minus 4.6. Yep. Okay. And if it's minus 3, that's pretty right there. And we're only getting minus 2 dB. So 1 dB difference now. And if we go into, let's say, minus 1 dB, and we're getting 0 0.1 over dB, 0.2. And of course, if we go into zero, it's actually 0.7. So now we've gained something as well. Okay, I will do the chart and be right back. Okay, I plotted the graph. I went 6 dB difference from zero to minus 612 all the way down to minus 72, and then measured the output of the plugin. And then I also did the difference between. Um, the input and the output. As we can see from the chart, it's about adding 12 dB to the signal all the way down to a minus 72 dB. Vocals probably won't go down, even whispers down that 72, but, you know, um, I thought I'll go down that way, uh, that, that low. And then as it reaches past four, minus 42 dB, Things changes. Now the difference is now becoming minus 10.6 dB difference instead of around 12 dB. So now it's around um, 11 dB. So the threshold to add the maximum gain is around, I would say, 46 dB or 44 dB or thereabouts between these two. That detail is not that important. I guess around minus 42 to 44 dB is a threshold. And after that, as every 6 dB, we are losing about dB of, uh, of difference. dB and a half and thereabouts. So we can see how it's actually progressing. So I charted them out as well. So that's the input and output reverse. So there is some compression there. And then in the end, the difference is usually minus 12 dB until it reaches about uh, 42 dB, according to the charts and so on. And after that, it goes all the way up to minus uh, 2 difference. And then after 12 is pretty much going down. So it's a gentle slope. So it does have some knee in in... Uh, at the bottom as well as the top, as its uh, compression ratio, upward compression ratio.
So that's what we are looking at. If you can see something else that I can not see, use the comment section below to let me know what you think. I don't have audio engineering or degree in, from a university. I'm just looking at the numbers and looking at the graph and what I can work it out. But if you have, you know, you've done audio engineering and audio algorithms and maths and all of that, please use the comment section below to help out as well and probably better explain what we are seeing on the screen. Just to wrap this up, uh, plotting a part of this uh, video and um, discovery, and the blue is the chart that is representing the input against the output. So our input at minus 72, we are getting 60.1. And the difference, which is in red, this is the gain that it's applied, is about 12 dB up until around 54, uh, minus 54 dB of signal input. And then gradually it's uh, getting less and less gain applied until it just reaches zero a dB input, and we are getting 0.8 dB gain added to the signal. As I mentioned, if you know a better way of analyzing the input-output ratio and the signals, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to have access to this chart that I've already done, I will leave a link in the description. It is basically a Google spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet. You can have a look at it as well and see what you can make of it. Now, just to wrap it up and finish off this part of my, in quotes, reverse engineering, the Waves MV2, let's see what visually we see on the screen when we apply it. I'm just apply 12 dB of gain. Let's stick with that and see what happens for that. I'm just going to right click here and say bounce to a new track. We have a bounce to a new track. And this is the difference. Okay, so let me just uh, unmute this one so we can compare it. Let's uh, make them really large, extra large. Don't need the mixer. Let's zoom in. So that, as you can see, all the lower volumes have increased, but higher level signals only increase ever slightly. Well, that's it for this part of the video. If you find it helpful, interesting, and entertaining, please give me a like and share. That helps my channel grow. And also, if you'd like to support my channel, feel free to give me a super thanks, join my channel membership, or make a one-off PayPal donation. Link in the description. Your support is truly, truly appreciated. And I do thank all those people who actually either give me a super thanks or donate through PayPal. Thank you so much. Till next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music and I'll catch you in the next one.